QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Bank Feeds, Add Remaining Transactions, and Bank Rules. Let's do it with Intuit, QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. In the view drop down, we've got the hide icon bar, the open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company financial, the pop profit and loss, the P and the L change in the range from a 10122 to 123122, and then customize it. Fonts numbers, they need to go up to 14. Why? Because I that's the way I like it. Doesn't have to be at 14. Yes, it does. 14. Reports drop down again, company and financial this time. The balance sheet standard, customize it, range change from 01022 to 123122, fonts and numbers. This has to match. It has to. Otherwise, people will go crazy. So we're going to make that 14. Okay. Yes. And okay. Then we're going to go into the banking drop down, bank feeds. We're looking at the bank feed center, which would only be set up if you turned on the bank feeds, which we've done in a prior presentation. So now we're in the checking account. We're in the unrecognized. We've gone over some of the rules and some examples of entering data. Now we're just going to go through and enter the data and rules as we go, which you might basically do in your normal kind of process of setting up the bank feeds, remembering that the first time you turn on the bank feeds, you want to make sure that you go through it more meticulously and add all the rules that will be applicable so that the next time you go through it, you will have to do less and less of that, more and more of it being automated. So I'm going to sort it this way. One way you could do it is to sort by your items over here so that you can possibly think about the related vendors and customers and then set up rules that would be applicable to them as we go. So this Amazon item here, so we'll add Amazon. I'm going to say Amazon. We'll just keep it there. I'm going to say this is going to go to Amazon. We called it Amazon income. Amazon, let's make let's make this go to the book sales. Amazon book sales. I'll set up a rule for that. So I'm going to assume this time I'm not going to distinguish between all the Amazons. I'm just going to pretend that this is a standard transaction that I see and set up just a normal rule. So we're going to add the details. And I'm going to say this is going to be just a rule and I'll just call it an Amazon rule. And then we'll say that this will say all or any. I'm just going to choose one this time so I don't need either one will fit. And I'm going to say that this will be the description. And I'm going to say it contains Amazon.com. Let's say I don't need the whole rest of it. And if it does that, I want you to apply it to the Amazon income account that we had set up and then we'll just say save it and close it boom save it and close it and that then should be pulling in i won't go to the balance sheet because we know the checking account's going to go down on the income statement side of things it should be going into our amazon book sales i believe was the deposit side of things closing that back out going back on over to the bank feeds and i'm just going to sort it this way again note that the sorting gets kind of jumbled every time you do something which is kind of annoying like you would think it would be nice if it kept the sorting the way it was even after you enter something, but it typically doesn't. So you got to resort every time. These are all coming from Audible. I'm going to assume that that's like an, an income account. So I'll just make a rule for it and I'll say, and I already had a rule before, but I deleted them all. So I'm going to say this is Audible. And then we're going to say this is going to be an Audible income account, noting that I'm making the income accounts by, in essence, the vendor, I mean, the customer that's paying us due to the fact that we're, we're making our income recorded from the bank feeds. Uh, so, so that means I don't have the added detail I would have if I was using invoices or sales receipts. So I'm gonna then say, let's add the rule details. I'm gonna make a, make a rule for it and just call it audible rule, audible. And all that's good, description, let's just say description and let's just say contains I don't need this whole thing. If they change some of that stuff, as long as it's got audible in it, I think the rules should apply. So we're going to say, save it, save it. That pulls over that transaction. And then the recognized transactions are here, which I could add this way or just select them both as they are here and hit the drop down, which is a rise up and actually rise up 
and then add confirm, roger that, roger out, transaction recognized. So if I go to the profit and loss, then we should have those items in here, I believe. So that looks good. Let's go back to the bank feeds. I wanna get these all in there because then we need them for the bank reconciliation component, I believe. So I'm gonna then sort it this way. We'll do another one, Verizon telephone. So if this was the first time entering that, we just say Verizon, make the vendor. We're gonna put this to a telephone account. I'll just make a rule for that so I don't have to do it every time. Let's automate this process. Let's scale it up, man. Let's do it so we can do everything fast. So it's gonna be Verizon rule. Description is gonna contain. Let's just make it contain Verizon. That's all I need, man. That's all I need. And then it's gonna go to the telephone. Okay. Confirm. The other one pulls into recognized. And I could just say, yeah, I see you there. Roger that, add it. And then we'll go back on over here and do it again. Circle K. So I'll just, okay, all right, circle, circle K. Now, I don't know, I probably went in and bought a, you know, a sandwich or something, I got a Coke. So what am I gonna do that? What's well, gonna go to miscellaneous, obviously, or something. I'll call it miscellaneous expense. <laughs> and we'll set that up and we'll say set it up now if it was a personal thing i probably should be putting it to draws right but i'm going to expense it that was an an essential business thing so we'll say okay business expense boom and then let's make a rule for it add more details make a rule it's going to be the circle k rule strange things are afoot at the circle k Circle K, and we're going to say description. That's in Bill and Ted's adventure. No one knows that anymore. It's an old, okay, whatever. No one cares. So it's going to, it doesn't need to match. It just contain that, and that should be good. So we'll save it. Save it. That's the only one we have there. So that's good. On the profit and loss, we got a miscellaneous now. You got to be careful with that miscellaneous expense because if you put everything in there, it's going to look funny. And if you report that on your taxes that with a bunch of funny stuff and miscellaneous, they might get suspicious. They might get, get paranoid over there. These are going to be transfers, we'll say. That's $75. Let's say that's a draw. I'm going to assume that's a draw. So I'll say the owner. And then it's going to be a draw, making sure this is an equity account because this is money that's going from the business to the owner. So I'm gonna say equity type of account and it's gonna be a draw, boom. And then I'll set a rule for it. We need a rule, add more details, rule, and then set a rule. And this is gonna be anytime it has, I'll say it's a draw, rule, description. If it contains that, that that should be good and then i'll save it boom bam pulls the other one over recognize you better recognize i recognize it okay then we're going to go back to the balance sheet we've got the cash going down the other side this time going to the draws it's a contra equity account we've talked about it in the past so i won't go into it in detail here we'll go back into the bank feeds back to the unrecognized so we can recognize more stuff. This is gonna, I think we put this in, this is Google. I put it into the, just a YouTube account. We'll set up a rule for that. Add more details. Rule, this is going for, this is the Google rule. Google already rules. Why do they need another rule? They already rule everything. This is gonna, contains maybe just Google and then boom save it okay and so then i'm going to sort this way again and we're going to say socal gas company so i'll call it socal gas this is going to be i just put it under util utilities i believe and then i'll make a rule for that as well a rule for the utilities and so we'll say rule 
and we'll just call it SoCalGas. And we'll say all or any, either description contains, as long as it's got SoCalGas, that's good. Don't need the paid, whatnot. That should be a good indication. That pulled over another one over here. So I'm going to say, let's add, let's recognize, add that. Profit and loss should have the gas pulled over into the utilities account. Boom. Done. Back to the bank feeds. What else we got? We've got the transfer here, which I'm going to add. Now, this transfer normally would be connected to the PayPal if I had the PayPal set up. But let's just imagine this one, because this was before the t so let's just imagine we're using the other method that this pulls in from PayPal into your checking account, and you're going to wait till it hits your checking account before you record the income as opposed to getting the detail from the PayPal account, which we talked about in the past. So you might call this either like PayPal income, or you might call it the income of the source that you're getting the money from like like uh let's just say uh, teaching uh, let's say video content or something video video content and so and then and that's going to be the generic well first of all let's make it from i'll just say pay pal as the generic vendor and then if i knew one vendor that i'm getting paid from you might have that one vendor but you might have multiple vendors paying you through paypal and then you might put it to just like to just like video income or whatever a generic income account that can encompass everything you're getting paid from through uh, PayPal noting that when you do this you're not going to have the breakout of the different people that paid you that you might then be able to apply to different accounts as we talked about when we set up the PayPal account so this is be a, a more simplified way to do it depending on your circumstances so I'm going to set it up it's going to be an income type of account. So income account, save it. And then we're going to say add more details, which would have a rule. And then you can just easily set up your rule. It's just the PayPal. It's got money in rule. And the description has PayPal transfer. That's it. It could match or just contain. And then boom, save and close and then profit and loss. Now, note, obviously my books, are these are just made up kind of things. I'm just entering the data, entering data. So, so now you've got that separate account. We would imagine video income here that, that would just be coming through as a generic account that comes through the platform of PayPal if you had a system where you're just using PayPal to get, basically collect the income and then transfer it in over to your, um, your bank account. So then we've got let's do another one we'll say primerica so let's say this is primerica and we'll say notice there's there's life insurance versus the other primerica here so you might if these were two different things name two different vendors for like insurance versus versus something else let's make sure, let's pretend these are two different types of insurance so let's say it was primerica life i might make a different vendor even though maybe i have the same company for two different types of insurance because then i can sort by the two different vendors for the two kinds of transactions so let's try that i'm going to then say the account let's say that this is going to be insurance i'm going to set up a couple accounts and I'll, I'll do it this way i'm going to go into the lists drop down here chart of accounts let's imagine we have multiple types of insurance so i might say okay Let's add a new account and make a parent account of insurance, expense type of account, continue. I'm gonna call it just insurance and then save and close. And then we might have multiple types of insurance underneath it. So you might say, okay, new, for example, expense account. And let's say this is liabi liability insurance and save and close. Oh, hold on a second. Let's edit that, edit that. Hold on, hold on, and make it a sub account of insurance. Boom. And then you might have other like auto insurance, add new, and let's say expense account, continue. Auto insurance, 
and then make it a sub account of insurance. Now, auto is kind of confusing because you have tax implications that might use a mileage method versus a specific identification. Insurance could go under auto or under insurance, so it gets a bit uh, confusing, but we'll just have those two, and that's one way you can break them out on the income statement. So if I go back to my profit or my bank fees, let's imagine that this one, this one was uh, liability insurance and the other two are auto insurance. Let's just imagine. So this is going to be uh, Primerica. Now, Primerica Life, I'm going to make a different vendor for it. I'm going to say that this is going to go to uh, li liability insurance. I'm going to make a rule for that, drop down more details and say we want a rule. I'm going to call the rule Primerica Life. And notice I have a distinguishing factor here and that I have life involved in it. So I don't really need two separate lines to make that rule. I just distinguish in the description between Primerica something else and Primerica Life in the one rule. So I want it to have a description and I'm just going to say contains, but I want to make sure it contains that last bit on the life to distinguish between the other one, which I'm going to pretend is another kind of insurance. I'll say, okay, set the rule. I'm going to sort like this again. Let's do the other one. Let's make this Primerica. I'm going to make it Primerica, uh, Primerica 01 to make it different. I made a different vendor. You don't need to make it a different vendor. You can have them both called Primerica and still distinguish the rules. But if you make different vendors, you can sort them differently in the vendor center so that you'll have the different items that will be applicable to what you're, you know, the, the accounts you're paying for. Okay, so I'm going to say, it says quick add vendor. I'm going to say, okay, boom. This is going to be auto, auto insurance, making a rule for it. And we'll say this is going to be then the rule of, I'm going to call it Primerica 01. And it's going to have contains. I just want to make sure it's got that 01 which is a distinguishing factor from the other one, which was life at the end. So I'll say, okay, save it, pulls that in. We've got one that's recognized. I'll recognize it. Let's go to the profit and loss. So now you've got that, those sub accounts on the uh, expense of insurance down here. So we've got auto insurance, liability insurance, which collapses into the insurance total. Notice that that gives us the capacity to put those two things, which would otherwise be, if not under the subtotal, ordered by alphabetical order. So this allows us to put them next to each other, although it does add a significant amount of space when I expand it, because now I've got two added lines, as opposed to just having two separate line items. The other way you can order your accounts is by account numbers, but then you got to turn account numbers on and that becomes its own tedious thing, which we, we have uh, courses on if you want to look at that. Let's go back to the bank feeds and let's go back to the unrecognized. So now we've got the safe deposit box. So let's just put this under, you know, the bank. <laughs> and we'll say that this is going to be, I'll just call it miscellaneous expense. And I'm not even going to make a rule for it. I'll just add that. I'm getting lazy. Skillshare. I'm going to call this Skillshare tab, tab account. We made a Skillshare uh, income account, Skillshare income. So I'm just going to quickly add that too to save some time. And then the SoCal gas. So I thought we made a rule for that already. In any case, I'll just add that. That's going to the utilities account. And I'm just going to add that so that we have everything uploaded and we can go to the next point, which is the bank reconciliation. Notice when I got lazy on those last three, that that could cause me problems in the following month because now, now those don't have a rule set up for them and I'd have to kind of uh, do a little bit more work at that point. So that's, that's what happens when you get lazy. So, so now, again, these are just generic numbers. So I, obviously they're, you know, we're just using data and recording them. So the, these aren't like accurate or anything, but these are just the examples of how you might be breaking off the income accounts. Note again, the income accounts are way too expansive now for most businesses because we're using like a gig work kind of setup and, and putting all the actual customers 
as an account, which you would not do if you were using the invoices and sales receipts to record income because you would have the sub accounts. But here it might be appropriate because we don't have the sub reports, which would be in the reports drop down sales, sales by customer, sales by item. So, so we have that there and then we've got our expenses. Notice the use of the sub accounts here making the income statement a lot longer, but giving us that, that breakout, which can be a useful tool. So next time we'll talk a little bit about, okay, we still have this issue with the beginning balance issue and the bank reconciliation kind of situation on the checking account. So we'll touch in on that, how the bank feeds kind of fit in and tie into the reconciliation and the problems with that first bank reconciliation that are often there due to the fact that you started the bank feeds at some point and you already had transactions before that, meaning there's a beginning balance that will need to be reconciled.